and we're going to start. Well, so all of how to make Instagram work for your business. And I'll be talking to you for the next 55 minutes. So you, uh, you can be away at three o'clock, do other things. We have a set format on a Tuesday. Yes, I'll, you know, this old bloke we'll be talking to, there'll be, there'll, we have a quiz. Start things off, please use the chat line. And also uh, during the course of the afternoon, we normally try and shoehorn in some sort of contrived humor as well. So um, let's, let's, without further ado, let's, let's get the ball rolling. Well, we are recording. Please feel free to use the chat line. There are the social media um, hashtag and also the sign where you'll find it. And as I say to it, every week, if, if any Humber side, Humber, I'll say Humber side, can I? Humber based business would like some assistance. There is a marketing one-to-one, -one which is fully funded or in old money free. Oh, I've had a, busy, no, I've had a really busy morning. I was out I've, yeah, since lockdown, I've taken up running. I was out running this morning. I, I spotted uh, a Marmite lorry. I think it was, um, I think it, it was Marmite lorry. I know it was because he was heading yeast bound. I, you know, so I've taken, oh, it's nice isn't it, when you go out running. I've actually... I've actually, um, in the last month, I've finished seven marathons. Hard to believe. Well, Snickers, as they're called now. Uh, but they, so actually, I've just entered a, uh, a half marathon uh, in Wales. It's going to be really difficult because you, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to keep up with the Joneses. Who <laughs> were... So yeah, there we are. Oh dear. Right. Actually, when I was out running the soaring, I saw a friend of mine. A friend of mine keep talking about these orthopedic shoes he's bought. You know, I just think he's built it up too much. Anyway, less of this jesting. We got to. We got. We got lots to talk about. And it's quiz time. It wouldn't mean quiz time. We have a quiz. Yes. If you now, please feel free. There's a prize. There's a prize, as, as always, we offer a prize to anybody. Uh, you know what the prize is? It's a night out uh, with me in Hull. Uh, second prize is two nights. So we have a quiz. So please feel free to use the chat line. Oh, we're going backwards here already. And, and uh, do you know what today's quiz is all about? Instagram. Ah, well, what do you expect? So question one about how many photos are uploaded to Instagram every second? I'm on the chat line here. Does anyone want to take a guess at that? I just leave me sitting here giving the questions and answers. Is anyone going to take a guess? I don't think they are. I don't know. I don't think they are. Debbie, 500? 15,000? 1 million? Good guesses. Well. Every second, every second, every second counts. Quick count out there, Paul Daniels. Um, 995. So anyone who's guessed a thousand, you're all right. Hey, do you know what? Here we are. Second question to the number one most shared food on Instagram is Harry. Helen, you're on it. You're on it. Anyone guess? We have two guesses. We've had Debbie with curry, Helen with pizza, and Alicia with bagels. Two for, two for pizza, and somebody's got curry, uh, curried pizza. I don't know what, uh, Veronica, I don't know what that is. I was. Anyway, what it is, I know, I, can't, I can feel the anticipation. Of course, it is pizza. The old um, Italian food that the Chinese clearly invented as the Americans. Here's a great trivia question for you, as a side point. Do you know how much it costs? Manufacturer. Manufacture, can I make it say it? Manufacture, a 16 inch pizza. There you go, there's a good one for you. Not that I've got anything to do with Instagram. Now, £1.25. You can see 900% margins at least. There you go. That's why. And it takes about 45 seconds to cook it. You can see why there's lots of pizza places. Right? I don't know why I went on to talk about pizza. Right. The question, the majority of Instagram users are aged between, I'm going to have a little drink now, where you sit there and type in, oh, got someone on the chat line, the majority, 18 to 24. 
Hey, hey, Helen, just between me and you, remember the old 18 to 30 holidays? Remember that? Yeah. Did he own one? He did. Ooh. He, he can't have such an age gap. 16 to 50? You know, uh, it's a bit wide, that age gap, isn't it? About 18, 29. I was going to do, it's going to be 18, 12, but don't want any overtures. I just thought that one. That wasn't in the script. Uh, 25. 34, 33% to that age. Right. The percent, how many brands are planning to increase their advertising budget for Instagram in 2021? Yeah. Little thing, little drink in our cocktail hour. Mm. Oh, that was nice. Too much gin in that. Uh, what, was, what was the question again? Um, um, how many brands are. Um, oh, have you been watching this already, Lorraine? 60? I'll tell you what. She must have been into this before. And Zoe as well. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious me. Old program, that one. Uh, right. 61%. So big bucks. Hey, you know, I was like, this is one of my favourites. The first picture on Instagram was on the 16th of July. What year? What year? Now, don't go, start Googling. No cheating. I'm watching. 2018, says Lorraine. 2012 for Helen. 2017, 2000. It's good. It's going through. They're going through now. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. Answer is 2010. What were you doing in 2010? Can you remember? Don't tell me that's going to make me blush. Right, what's up next? Oh, how many logos? This is a good one. Has Instagram had? Now, even the wise ones amongst you will know that's only 10 years. How many logos Instagram had? A trick question this one, but go on. Give me a number. Let's get on with the webinar. Give me a number. Six, four, two, four, six, eight. I tell you what, you have to be a certain age to get some of these jokes. Um, Right, how many logos? Well, you're all wrong. How about this? 15, 15, 15. Yes, well, it just shows you, you see, you know, think about logos constantly evolving. Quite a few businesses change the logo to cater for social distancing, no less. Right, we've got to get on with this now. Most used hashtag. Love, fashion, AC12. I only said that because it's in the line of duty. Instagood. Oh, do you know what I do? Do you know, between me, can, isn't Kate Fleming pretty? I thought this mentioned that. It's a sort of side issue on line of duty. Right, anyway, carry on. It's a side. Don't ignore that. It's just me rambling. The most used, um, most used hashtag on Instagram is a love food Instagood. Da, 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 da. Love. And finally, the most followed account on Instagram, Ronaldo, Instagram, Kylie Jenner, Justin Bieber, Kate Fleming, Messi. Who is the most followed Instagram account? Da, 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 Kylie. Two for Kylie, one for Justin. Oh, Debbie, you little devil. You're on it today. Tell you what, you know, you have nearly won the prize. You've ne nearly, you're just within a little whisker. Here we go. The top 10 most followed accounts on Instagram. Instagram first, Ronaldo second, Ariana Grande, is that the right? Wayne The Rock Johnson. I remember him when he was just a pebble. Yeah, Kylie Jenner, yeah, all there. Yes. Well, that past 10 minutes, didn't it? Thank you very much for taking part in the, I hope you've enjoyed today's webinar. Actually, this is only started. What, why, why use Instagram? That's not a bad thing. Now, I'm going to talk to you about Instagram. I have assumed a little bit of knowledge already. Is that okay? It is okay. Well, it's going to be. So, the real reason is to get discovered by a vibrant community. They are not my words. Those words they are. Those are the words on the Instagram website. Aha. So they also go on to say these, I'm just me, me plagiarizing here. 
You can easily share photos and videos to tell people who you are, what you do, and why they should follow you, and to stand out from others, straight from the horse's mouth. There we go. Tell people you are, what you do, and why they should follow you. But there's a billion people on the pro, you know, there's a lot of people out there to reach. So Instagram is a fast growing and dynamic platform. Now, so here we are. Let's start. This is about how to make your business successful. So the first thing you should do is start a business account. And you should therefore have your personal account and sign up for a business account. You go to settings, account, and you must switch to a professional account. Well, why should you do that? Because you get a lot more benefits and a lot more insight so doing. And on the screen is the very point. Now you'll get a copy of the slides. But please don't worry, I'll be taking a picture of it. There you are, you switch to a professional account. That's the starting point. So you think about, you have that as your starting point. Now, with this business account, you can then connect Facebook, the aforementioned owner of Instagram. You can then link it to your Facebook business page. Oh, and believe it or not, you can share posts on both channels and find people to follow. So for example, you may have lots of followers on Facebook. You start an Instagram account, you merge the two together, and there is your opportunity. But no crossed posting because Instagram encourages hashtags and Facebook less so. So you may need to do a little bit of editing somewhere along the road. So that's the first thing to do. And then you must update your settings. None of this, I'm a private account. You set your account to public. So non-followers can see you and interact with you. And also it allows them for comments and messages from users. So you are there. Think of it as a big, giant market square or forum where you can interact with whomever you wish. And critically, then, is to turn on the notifications so you can stay up saying, nothing nicer. Get a little note buzz on your phone saying, someone's like a post. Yeah, it happened to me about three weeks ago. Really nice. Really nice. Bye. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mum. So next on the list. We've got a business account, we've linked it, we're going to come up with a strategy. And it usually is these five things. Think about your, your goals, your audience, your competitors, your profile, and then to under, understand, I can say it, understand the Instagram, I'm difficult to this word, I'll try it again. Instagram, ha, 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 Instagram aesthetic. There we go. So let's think about the goals. You usually come in this form. So I think when you actually are posting, are you doing any of these things? Are you showcasing your products? You get to build some brand awareness. Hopefully you'll attempt to increase sales. You get to be sharing company news, driving loyalty and trust. Or are you going to foster an engaging community? You may wish to think that you may look towards each one of your posts or your activities is it achieving any of those? Or is it a collective effort? Or are you just going to go out there for the home run and keep posting? Sell, sell, sell. Well, maybe not. So, as in all marketing activities, the real thing to do for your product or your service is to identify your target audience. And it really comes in looking at a persona. So think really carefully about your demographic, age, gender, location, the persona, the interest they may have, and importantly, their Instagram behavior, the hashtags they use, what they care about, and which brands they follow. This is all in the world of Instagram. You can clearly identify your customer persona. So next, you must always and this is a general marketing tip to write with your audience. Don't write for yourself, write with your audience in mind. Oh, those pencils are great people, you know, the pencils. You know, do you know the first people, one of the first uh, people to uh, talk about pencils in, in, in literature? 
Do you know who it was? Shakespeare, Hamlet, to be or not to be. So think really carefully about all the time writing for your audience, and you'll know the answer depending on the level of engagement you get. So think with that in mind. Right. Next thing, play competition. We've got them, they're all there. In analyzing what your competitors do, some competitive analysis, so you can follow your favorite brands, your, your, your people who may be your potential customers, people you look up, but you can also clearly see what your competitors are doing, who their followers are, what they're posting, etc. But obviously, it is, as always, a two way street. So once you've done that, look at your competitors. And also think about these clear things. What hashtags are they using? Are there industry hashtags? Think about when you look at the brands you're interested in or the ones you look up to or the ones in your sphere, what language is being used to communicate with the audience? Is it serious? Is it light? Is it what? Is it millennial language? And then really about your content and visuals what resonates most with your target market. So on this, it's not difficult to visit a competitor, look down their feed and see which ones get the most engagement. And also you think about the brands you admire and aspire to the same thing and others within your sector. You know, before you make with any social media, often the best work is done in preparation. What did the Duke of Wellington say? He said, battlefields are won on the streets or the fields, or was it in the tent beforehand? Think carefully about that. So, first things first, build a solid optimized profile and bio. So, I'm going to show you some examples. First things first, we don't like having, who doesn't, on, hands up. Who doesn't like having their picture taken? Me. It's your, for, for many businesses, depending on if a lot of you, it will be. Veronica raised her hand. Me too. I, I, I only did it visually. I won't move the fingers on there, but it also applies less so to less so to Instagram. Look at look at look at LinkedIn, look at Facebook, and look at it's well proven. Show your toothy pegs, smile, the brand you make instant decisions about people. So having it's well worth the investment to crack open the piggy bank and to have your picture taken professionally. So next thing to do is to think about your profile picture. So you're obviously the image and all those sort of things, it has to be certain pixelation. Absolutely critically, to make sure each and every one of your social media platforms match up to the same image, the same background, the same brand across that. Instagram have cut it into shape, but to make sure it's critical. And so you've got that. So you've got your brand, your logo there, all on message. So, right. Now, the other thing, I think one of the quirky things about Instagram is that many people, well, you see lots of names of on. So you have to think really carefully, you may wish to think that you can choose any name, but ideally you want your name to be searchable and found. And ideally the same as your username, but also to weave in keywords. So you've got a better chance of being found. And here is a great example. I come back to this one. Keiku. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Keiku. And look, they've described themselves there. They've got a fantastic image, evocative image of a lady, well dressed in, a, in a, holding the pillow there. But look, pillows by Kai or Kay. So they're describing the product. And look how it's written: handmade textiles plus honeycomb shelves. The home. Come back to this in a moment, but the image there and the use of keywords 
invaluable, but I'll come back to this a little in a mo. And as in Kamu Keiko, you have to choose the type of industry your brand falls into to help visitors. You may or may not be able to pigeonhole yourself, but think about carefully about the category. And then, as I said, you can describe what your business does. So here, go back to KQ. Handmade textiles plus honeycomb charms for home. Judicious use of an emoji there. Thoughtfully crafted around the globe. And then some home decor tips. So you are describing to your audience. And again, please think of writing for your audience as well as being searchable. Often I see people writing, I do this, I do that, I do the other, and not necessarily thinking about it, what may well be search friendly. And whether we like it or not, the emoji shows humor, personality, brand. So I, I've used the word judicious to describe emoji, but in Keiku there, Putting an emoji in place of an O, I thought was lovely. So, but then as always, you would like in your bio profile to have a call to action. And so in that example, it could be as simple as shop. What do you want your audience to do? But don't forget, you may want some of you to put in there your phone number or your way of contacting you. Never forget. But the bio is the, one of the only places you can actually include within the world of Instagram a clickable link. So you put your link in the bio, but you may wish to direct your click to more than one destination. And you then would have to use a social bio link. What is a social bio link or where can I find one? Well, on the screen are three places to go in which to create a social bio link. You can link to more than one place. You link Dorby Linktree. There, use things wisely so you can actually make the most use of it rather than being straight jacketed by the current Instagram rules. Now, the next thing. Your bios you've got there is to think about your Instagram. Got that word again, the Instagram aesthetic, your footprint. You've got to think really carefully about this and about because Instagram is visual. So there is a theory of thinking that many, many, when you're looking at the profile and the feed within Instagram. You may wish to think about creating as a feed composition. No, this isn't Monty Don on a Friday night. This is putting your checkerboard effect when you see it on the screen. So you may, it's not randomly choosing one. You are creating a palette. You may wish to do that as, as in not necessarily the Queen's Gambit, just think about the chessboard and the checkerboard effect. And I'll show you some illustrations in a moment. Just think about how things will appear. And here is a great example on screen of Ray-Ban, January since 1937. Look at the use of their colours. They're choosing across the feed three different colours, depending on, on the nine squares, if I can so put it, in front of your eyes. So maybe one little piece of homework is to go back, look at your own feed, to think about how it appears. Now, Ray-Ban is obviously a very significant brand. Largely visual is an important thing, but you are there because brand is about perception. So Ray-Ban have done that. So you can use these little tools about, you can use feed previewer, Planoli and Plan are all great tools to visualize what your Instagram feed will look like. So, those things you've got that in terms of looking at there. 
And then you have to think really carefully, as I mentioned, about the color palette that you are using in your images and text and stories. Reminds me of my, my art teacher at school. And what he said to me, Simon has difficulty drawing his own breath. <sighs> I wish I could, I could never draw faces. Anyway, it's by the by. So think really carefully about the palette you're using. And here are some examples. I like to talk about food. But look at this ice cream or supplier, manufacturer, custom ice creams. 50 shades of pink. But it's their brand, it's their logo, it's their image, it's their identity. So you may wish to follow the same rules, thinking about the use of colour and the palette in terms of how it your appears. The other way, of course, is to think about filters. A filter is to Instagram what makeup is to a model. Hmm, I've just thought that up. And here is an example of tea, a tea business here, food and beverage again. But look, the, the way that those pictures have been substantially improved with the use of the tailor-made, off-the-shelf, spoke Instagram filters. They're there. So when you are taking a photograph, it does give you the opportunity to crop and use filters and use it to your advantage. That looks lively. So the principle there, the key story, a luxurious experience, organic, fresh, caffeine free. And it looks, looks, and feels vibrant. So you may wish to choose to follow the same pathway. So think also about fonts. Let's go with their fonts. And you know, pubs have just opened. Uh, in my local pub, three fonts walked in to the pub. And the barman said, I'm sorry, we don't serve your type here. But you may wish to be really think carefully about that. And here we are, it's a good example. Look about Chanel and look about style has its own vocabulary. But you may wish to modify your fonts. There's lots of fonts, and again, it apply across your social media platforms, particularly here. You may want to think about style. What's next? Well, that's given you a whole insight to follow Instagram. Lots of things to do. There's five tips. The aesthetics, the bio, the goals, etc. But now, do you know how many formats there are Instagram to use? Anyone want to tell me on a little drink how many tools to use on Instagram? You can drink while well, something appears on the chat line. Give me a number. What have we got? Let's have a look. We have got any advance on one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we've got nine. Nine things to do. There we are. Standard, you've got stories, you've got reels, you've got live carousel. You know, I think of when I hear the word carousel. I think of the word. You remember, you know, any football fans on today's webinar? Any football fans? Any Liverpool fans? You'll never walk alone. You know that song? You'll never walk alone, sung by the Liverpool fans. You know? That was originally from the musical Carousel. Rogers and Hammerstein. Yeah, just a quick, uh, quick bit of trivia for you before we move on. So. Start images, carousel videos. I'm going to take you through each and every one. Ah, so the image. First and foremost, you're going to take a picky on your phone and you're going to upload it. And it's going to be insta gorgeous Instagram Instagrammable picture. Yep. You can just do that and then put your hashtags and Bob's your uncle. But look at that. What a fantastic image. You know, of a lady uh, paddling away. So it's a it's a adventure, it's a, it's a staycation. This is a great way of just being um, demonstrating. So the image is king. You can see what um, 
what that evokes. Really think about the powerful use of images. So think about making gorgeous Instagrammable pictures. You may need help with that, so don't just paddle your own canoe. Now, the next thing to think about is the aforementioned carousel. What's a carousel? Well, it can rotate horizontally across your feed. So you look on a picture and you don't have to include one picture. You can include 10 images in a single post. What's the benefit of doing that? Well, here's an example of an organization called Zimmerman. And they are demonstrating a dress. And don't just take one picture, take 10. Or take five if it's a Dave Brubeck post. So think that you may wish to take a number of pictures. So it can be a mosaic, it can be the Bayer tapestry esque. I think you may need to take 10 pictures to demonstrate there you what you do, and you just swipe across. So rather than use an image, you go to using the carousel. But a lot of you are using video to give us far, far more time spent watching videos. So at the top of your Instagram, on your phone up here, there are little circles where people put stories up there and nail that ideally there are five. 100 million each day. So it has to be a nail biter, much in the same way as that aforementioned program on a Sunday night, the cliffhanger. But they only last for 24 hours and a maximum of 15 seconds. But they are influencing. And it does show that sort of whatever that authentic side of your brand, so putting videos in there into the stories. Mayfly-esque, only lasting that short period of time. So you might want to create some ways of doing it. So some fantastic, fantastic even, templates out there. The likes of Ascend, InStory and Ash are all great ways in which you can make the most use of the tools on the stories. So there we go. Now there's a whole host of features within the stories. I really like the countdown and product launch stories are all in there. Wonderful example there on the screen about sleepwear. Who doesn't like a dog? And there we go, countdown to using that. So it's creating a little video with a countdown feature in there. So it's again, driving the uh, middle of excitement and pushing the brand. So within the stories, you can use questions, quizzes, not a quiz tonight, polls, gifs, gifs even, or gifs depending on location, obviously hashtags. And if you have more than 10,000 followers, you can click see more. And that's the powerful Instagram info. So there's a lot within creating the story feature. See the likes of fantastic here, shopping stickers. So you can see here using that. And again, you're moving to, to uh, view the product, all sorts of features in there. Now, moving along from stories, you've then got story highlights. You may be following this. We hope you're following. We're now on to number four. But these last more than 24 hours. And they are beneath your bio, they live there, and they tend to highlight big events and often used to introduce products to the use of story highlights. And here they are. So you can see right at the top there, you've got the, the bio, the number of followers, etc. And underneath their little circles are the highlights. Now, this organization designed wheel covers, wheelchairs. But you can see that they've got a whole variety of different wheel covers of which they've used the Instagram high story highlights to demonstrate the different types. So you may be a business with four or five strands to what you do. Well, why not put an explainer video in the highlights? It's just there 
in perpetuity. There we go. What's next? IGTV, Instagram, away. But this is far more than the 15 seconds or so of the stories. But look up between a minute and 60 minutes. But this can be far more significant to use that. Principally have been used for product reviews, interviews behind the scenes. So if you're creating much longer video, IGTV could be for you. And here's a good example of Margot interior design using IGTV walls of the houses and taking you through the world of interior design. But if you're creating video, again, it can be purposed across different platforms, but using it on IGTV, again, you've got fantastic insights. Now, the Instagram Reel. Now, let me tell you about Instagram Reels. TikTok created real excitement. And what did Instagram do? They chose to copy it. So what you made if you're TikToking and you want these kind of fun, short, videos you may also repurpose them by using instagram reels in the same way that Twitter did the same thing with their version and you can see the power of making the humorous kind of short-term video and there we have the use of instagram reels there are also the live rooms no less many businesses may choose to create live video like here live video it can be the live shopping again it could be a into q a behind the scenes tutorial you can repurpose things so you can create a live video and it becomes igtv but the use of live may be something that you're doing so use that where are we up to i think we're up to next one shopping 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 we're all back shopping and but there are 130 million accounts active on shopping posts People are discovering product for sale, the following brands. You can set up your own company shop in the form of a catalogue, but you need to qualify as a checkout business. And there's a little process to go through on Instagram. So if you're looking to set things up rather than leaping to whatever eBay, Amazon, you can also, or direct sales, shop and set up your own Instagram shop as is a good example here, using granola. It's in teeth a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, because I eat for my breakfast. You know what I have for breakfast? Three shredded wheat. So about morning routines, again, here, great thing to do. And you can see quick view products. And there you are. You can buy your muesli and your granola, your heart's content for a healthy breakfast. There we go. So there were the tips what you need to do now you've got the night you've, you've got your bio you've got your plan you've got the nine things to use you can now need to create great content and here it is we're going to go through all these things to do to create some fantastic content so you want you really need is user generated content that is not created by you it is created by your users has a higher conversion rate. People don't always trust the brand. They trust the customers who talk of the brand. So what do you want them to do? You want your customers to tag you on their photos. You want to be on their reviews so you can then share them. You encourage your customers to create content tagging you and then you can share it. It's so much more powerful in your own content. This applies across all platforms. The next thing to think about, you may wish to use quotations. It's a fresh voice. It can be inspiring. So this is an example of a software scenario. It's creating the blog and creating powerful quotes there. A lot of people are drawn by quotes. Don't ask me if you can do it ask how to do it but just using quotes you're adding dimension to your postings you've also can just be brazen as i mentioned just by promoting your own products 
but you know you don't also want to become the second-hand car salesman or pub bore by keep doing things but you may want to find clever ways much the same way we saw with the muesli it's aspirational and here you've got uh, an example about a limited edition item you know a classic twist great photo fragrance and there you are so it's spring is in the air and it's not heavy on the cell but it's again it's aspirational and it's all driven by the image education quoting donald rumsfeld here you don't know what you don't know you may wish to use the content on instagram for that what problem do you solve here we go candles or candles no less this is a business that's telling you about candles they are using in effect organic candles so they're using pure essential oils as a different way of making a candle but they are focused very much on possibly an environmental message also seasonal posts Get that calendar out what's coming up soon eh what's coming up soon well happy world Nutella day was here not so long ago there are so many days some of them really esoteric and unusual but get the calendar out what's coming up you've got may day coming up and a whole series of events you plan posts around the seasonality especially if your product or service is it could be relative or a degree of consanguinity that's a good word isn't it oh, look at what that means between between the seasonality and the post then you may wish to create content relating to news publicity and here you've got a, you've got a brand here who's won an award you are, you are celebrating it shouting it from the hilltops but what you're doing is creating depth to your posts you're not just promoting you're educating you've won awards you are creating across the whole spectrum so we're going to conclude today for the next few minutes with give you some instagram tips so the algorithm is not about chronology time feeds is dependent on the content that you are interested in, not the time. So what's on the feed is relative to things that you'll be interested in viewing. So your homework is to prove to Instagram that people find your content interesting in a short amount of time after posting. Let me repeat that. Prove to Instagram that people find your content interesting interesting in a short amount of time after posting it works in the same way as linkedin if you post and not much happens what happens you yes you, yes you do you get knocked down the list so the homework you need to get shares and shares quickly so get more shares you get more engagement immediately after posting and that you would write alt text description for your images in the same way as you would your website. And do you know this? Just between me and you, just between me listening, you can leave your comments on your own post the next time you post. Okay, post. Put your comments up there instantly. Ring up a mate as well, straight away. Don't just leave it. There's no harm in liking in your own post, but comment as well. Straight away, play the rules, play by the rules. They don't know what those numbers are. They don't know what the numbers are. 2,225. Well, you've got 2,200 characters right on your instagram post and after 125 those words appear see more mm. 
So I think that you've got to make it count in that first 125. As you see here, with good old Abby. Using you guys can buy, finally buy some of those popular designs directly from me emoji. And off you go. And then you've got the, the uh, up to 30 hashtags underneath. It's all in the first few words. Get people's interest. You may wish to invest your time in a caption generator. So as anybody on this webinar, because here, sounding slightly smug, use Cap Genius or Preview. A great way, if you're looking for humor, looking for someone to help you do it, use those tools to help you on your Instagram way. And your hashtags. You can use up to 30. So you've got, but you can use big ones, little ones, and small ones. Now, what I mean by that is ones that are, are got high usage, small usage, and less so, and you can just vary them. But you can also use branded ones. As you see here, the likes of Disney are actually using their own hashtag. Share your ears, make a wish. You can use your own hashtags. You don't just follow blindly. You can use branded hashtags, popular hashtags, etc. You might need help. We all need help. You can follow relevant hashtags. How would I do that? Well, is anybody using? God, it's good, isn't it? Today? You get lots of people get lots of tips. Hashtag expert or the beautifully mentioned hashtaggy. All there. There's great places to go to see about trending hashtags and how, why, what use. Now, critically. The big thing to do, and probably the most important thing you can do on Instagram, is to engage with your clients. Please respond to all comments. Leave comments and likes in other accounts. Be a good citizen. And you may wish to choose to collaborate with similar accounts. So if you make tea, you may wish to choose to work with somebody make ink. But you understand, bricks and cement, whatever it might be. They're, they're, uh, you're better together than on your own. But you can also look to start groups as well and to start things in terms of commenting and looking at each other's posts. There's lots you can do. And to finish off, why is that on the screen? I don't know, but think of this, one pound eight. What is that all about? What's that tip? Well, this is what one pound eight is. Search. 10 different hashtags in your niche. Comment on the top nine posts, leaving your two pennyworth. There we go. So two pennyworth times nine times 10. And it's a one pound 80. So think of 180. Search the hashtags, find the posts, put your two pennyworth, pennyworth in, and there you go. One pound eighty. What a great way of actually thinking about engaging with your customers. And don't forget, you can always try and do. Who doesn't like competition? We all like to win things. Well, Instagram's the place for that. But really, wouldn't you be better off finding an influencer? I've only got five hundred followers. Or wouldn't it be great to have somebody who's got five thousand or five hundred thousand? Well. How about trying these two platforms? Find the influencers. Hey, not difficult. And then you look at them and you engage, you audit them. You look at the engagement follower ratio. It's about a, a half a million followers and very, they're following very few themselves. And then you can fake for, use a fake follower checker to see if they're all real people. Because there are guys out there. And then you go to contact them. So you can propose a collaboration. So, for example, if you made trainers or things, you may want to find a major influencer who is, you know, personal trainer. So there's lots of different things that can happen there. So you may want to invest a few pennies to find 
the right influencer. Mm. You can do it organically. You can get, hopefully, people, your customers may just share items for you. But you may want to go down that route. And you can always crack open the piggy bank as well. But Instagram ads. And people often ask, when's the best time to post? And this is really important because I mentioned earlier, for those of you who are still listening, that the algorithm works in such a way that you want to have instant engagement. Think about the best time to post. Well, uh, try, 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 at least once a day. And then you may want to think about the time to post. Often said, lunchtime when people have got the phone in their hands, or evenings when they're sitting watching something else, is the best way and really in business business weekdays is best it does vary because travel industry and things like i've got very particular niches my advice to you is to research your particular area to find the best times to post because that will certainly help with your engagement and there's lots to do to track and see how things have succeeded and how do you do this well, if you've got a business account, what do you do? On the screen, you go to your insights and you see what's working and what's not, what's engaging and things. So your insights are there because marketing ultimately is about success and measuring your success. So the insights is a place to go. Oh, so, don't forget, promote your Insta. And how do you do that, no less? Well, you put it on your website. You set up a direct feed and actually see the feed appearing on your website. Personally, my website, I have Twitter as a direct feed, so there's lots of activity there. There's more, but for the many clients I'm working with, they have a direct feed for Instagram. So it also synchronizes. There we go. So how about thinking about that? And I've worn you out. For being here for nearly an hour. I'm going to thank you. Pretending. Whew. Have you had enough? I can keep going. I won't, because I'll take any questions before we shuffle off. If anyone's got any questions, if not, don't forget, we're recording this so you can see it again. And next week is all about customer service. If you fancy coming back for more, you can have more next week on a completely different subject. If there's no end to my talents or beginning, no less. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. I'm going to look on the chat line now. What's going on on the chat line? Oh. Veronica is saying thank you for sharing the tips about using and growing Instagram. Well, thank you, Veronica. Are you able to do all the tips within Instagram? Debbie, yeah, all the tips were within Instagram. And can you go through how you'd actually do these, please? What do you press? Actually, we're going to be running a session on basics for Instagram where we'll be doing stuff live. This was, oh, I can't do it. Is there a card? Oh, what have we got that? Miss that? No, there's no, uh, there's, there's charges for Instagram advertising and doing things of that nature. But to my knowledge, there is no cost for running the shop. Thanks for that. Lots to do. Lots to do. So, any questions? Any more? Hope I've answered them as best I can. Well, if not, I will thank you very much. So, I will, each and every one of you will get a copy of the slides. You'll get a copy if you fancy watching anything again. And you get the invites next week. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to do so because I'll be writing to each and every one of you. Always give me some feedback. God, those jokes are a bit old. Anyway, if not, I enjoy what to do. If you, and if you do, that's even better. Right. Anyway, I must go now. Time to go. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Same time, same bat channel next week. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Christine.